Welcome. So today I'm going to talk about domain and range from graphs. If you haven't done a little much work with domain and range before, it might not be the best place to start. It's not a terrible place to start, I wouldn't imagine, but you know, it is what it is. If you have a little background, it'll probably be easier to grasp. Now, when I talk about domain and range specifically from graphs, I'm talking about uh, basically the x and y terms. So this is my coordinate in most cases. You have the x first. I tend to think of uh, the abbreviation for doctor. So this would indicate that the, my domain values are my x's and my range values are my y values. Now, when I have a function, which is what we're trying to graph here essentially, uh, I'm dealing with the idea of input versus output. So when, like, when you have a soda machine, there's a button that will say like Dr. Pepper. You'll press that button and hopefully a bottle of Dr. Pepper falls out at the bottom or can or whatever type of machine it is. So your input is you're pressing it. The output is the machine releasing the soda to your care. Um, in a graphic situation, or when we graph things, we're looking at, uh, and oftentimes we'll do slope-intercept form, so this whole thing. And you may say that y is equal to negative 2x plus 2, or whatever. Um, I can get any output that I want. I can get any y value by plugging in an x. So say I want to know where the graph should be at positive 1. So I'll plug in the 1 value here, and the matching y value for it should be negative 2 times 1, which is, of course, you know, negative 2, plus 2 more is 0. So what I found out is that when I plugged in a 1, I ended up with a 0. So that point of 1 and 0 should be on the graph somewhere. It sort of looks like this graph, even though I didn't intentionally do it that way. Um, on the other side of it, when we want to know entire values of domain and range, uh, for domain I'm going to look for the difference between where the x starts and then where it stops. And the important part here is I do have these dots on the end to indicate that the uh, graph sort of stops there. So my domain value would be here. Conversely, my range value will go from here all the way down to here, but we'll probably name it based on the bottom. So here's my range value. So my domain values would be my x's and my range values would be my y's. So let's talk a little bit more about the graphs for a second and we'll talk about notation and then we'll be on our way. So continuous versus discrete. Now when you do continuous graphs it just means that the lines have arrows on the end of them and they don't have dots essentially. If it's a line it's a continuous graph. The nice thing about this, it doesn't have to have the arrows, I don't know why I said that. Um, the nice thing about a continuous graph is you can show it in a whole bunch of different ways. In fact in this case my domain so my distance from here to here, and I think I did it in red earlier, so my domain value would go on forever, both ways. So we may say that the domain is all real numbers because it just extends on for all times. And the range, it'll go from down here to up here, but it'll continue to go up and down, is also all real numbers. So when you have a continuous graph, you're dealing with fractions and or I could plug in a decimal for x and get a y value that matches it and that whole thing. So I'm thinking about everything in there. On the other side of it, when you're talking about a discrete graph, you really only have the option uh, for identifying the domain and rain values in terms of where their points are. So uh, if I were to show my domain here, I'm going to do it in what's called roster notation, and I'll show you more about this in just a second. So I just put the x values for each one of the points. So negative 1, 0, uh, 1, 2, and 3. So those are my domain values. On the flip side of that, my range would be the y values that correspond to them. So negative 3, negative 1, positive 1, 3, and 5. So if I have a discrete value, uh, if I have discrete values, the only thing I can do is name the dots, and if I have, or the coordinates, and if I have a continuous graph, I can name a large group of them. So uh, if you have that kind of question, make sure that you answer it in the correct form. Now let's talk about notation, because apparently people who do math for, uh, who did math in the beginning felt like, you know, it'd be cool to have like six or seven ways to explain the same thing. Basically we have three. The first that you're going to deal with is roster notation. Roster notation, like I said before, serves you best in the discrete setting. I didn't mean to put that there because it makes a non-function out here. 
So basically what I'm going to do is have a domain that's inside what's called curly bracket. That'd be this thing. To me, it always reminds me of like Alfred Hitchcock Presents or something. And mine are very badly drawn, by the way. I mean, they're not even close to what they should look like. But they're about as good as I can do. So what I'm going to do here, if I'm looking for domain, is I'm just going to pick their values and we'll make up some fake ones here for a second. I'll match that there, there, there. Like I said, really badly drawn. I mean, this is low effort for the scale of things. So my x values, let's just do that, would be negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. So negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. So the roster would be everybody that's on the domain team, and then everybody on the range team. And those, I thought those curly brackets were bad, but that one right there is miserable. Would be negative 2. 3 and 1. I'm going to put them in numeric order. You don't write the same thing down twice, by the way. So since I have negative 2 twice, I don't write negative 2 down twice. It helps me determine whether it's a function or not really later. Um, from an interval notation, what I'm looking at for interval notation is thinking about where the graph goes and what covers and all this other such stuff. So let me make a graph really quickly. I'm going to say my graph looks like this. It's got a point here and it's got a line here. So there's a couple things that you need to know for interval notation. The first is that if you use a bracket like this, it means that's a hard and fast endpoint. So when I have my dot, I'm going to put a bracket at that end. On the other side of it, <coughs> if I have, um, and it, you would end it like this if there's a very uh, limited space, I've limited the interval. On the other side of it, if I have sort of the parentheses, that means that it's a soft end. It's just sort of there. It's kind of where it ends, but not really. It's usually where you put the next thing, which is infinity. Infinity means it goes on and on forever, and if you have negative infinity, it goes back down, that whole thing. It doesn't stop, and you can make like a cool mask with it. I'll save you from that. If you have multiple graphs at the same time, uh, that incur different parts, like maybe you have another one over here that goes out this way or whatever, uh, you can deal with the union symbol, but I'm not going to talk much more about it as far as that's concerned. For this graph, we're going to say that there is a line that this is at negative 3 and maybe at positive 2, and then this one goes on forever. So my interval values here would be, I have a, my domain values the hard end here at negative 3, so I need to put the, bra uh, the bracket, sorry, negative 3, and then it goes up to forever. It's infinity, so I'm just going to put the infinity symbol here, put a nice little parenthesis to let me know that that's my domain interval. My range interval uh, has sort of a, you know, no real, on the bottom it doesn't have any end, so I can put the parentheses on the other side and say negative infinity goes on down forever and then on the other side of it I would say that the upper end or the upper limit of that range is at positive 2 and that's pretty hard and fast so I'm going to use the brace there. Um, if I were going to write it out in a normal way I would say that uh, my domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and my range is y is less than or equal to positive 2 that whole thing. That's the difference between interval notation and what we would usually write. On the other side is set builder notation. There are tons of resources for set builder notation. You should go look at them. Um, in this case, I'm going to do from here up or something like that. When I talk about sets, I'm just defining things. So uh, the perf a nice example of this one would be x so that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. That would be the domain uh, set that I'm looking at for any of those. The nice thing about set builder notation is you can identify things as all reals by using the big R. Occasionally you'll see that. So if you have an all real number set, you may see x so that x includes all real numbers. And you can use a, a z for integers or you know whatever it happens to be. So you can really hold numbers, natural numbers. That's a possibility with set builder notation where it isn't anywhere else. Those are the notations. And uh, lines versus end dots, we've talked about it to death. Essentially the end dots really lock it in. I just want to make sure that I talked about it so I put the slide on here. It really locks it in. So my domain and range here are grouped. So I can do a perfect interval where I'm going to use the brackets 
or if I'm going to write, I'd say that it's, uh, my domain value here is negative 4 up to positive 5, so negative 4 and 5, and my range value would be from negative 3 all the way up to positive 4, and that's an interval notation for my domain and range here, or I may just make the little inequalities y is up to 4. Uh, on the other side of it is sort of you're in the all real numbers situation or in the of course the negative infinity all the way up to infinity. And that's really the case here for the domain and the range. So that's it I think as far as uh, graphs go. I'm going to click over just to make sure Oh, wavy grave, yeah, I forgot. I thought it was over, it's not. One more thing, uh, if domain and range is locked into something other than a line, what happens if I have these kind of weird graphs? So in the first one, it's a quadratic. I'm locked in here, but not at the top. So if I want to do interval notation, I would say uh, my y value, this is my range, um, is negative 2 and all the way up to positive infinity. My domain would be all real numbers because it really just says this arrow goes up forever but it also goes out forever even though it's kicking back just pretend in your mind it's not so in a quadratic it tends to go up so you end up with uh, positive infinity and negative infinity it'll move slowly out but it'll move out uh, and you know so all real numbers is domain ranges x then or y is greater than or equal to negative two in this which is a cubic graph for the most part I have the dots so I could lock it in at uh, a domain value of negative 2 all the way up to positive 3 like this or if I want to do interval notation I can do that nice uh, bracket because I have the ability to do that here for range it goes down to negative 5 and remember when you use range you have to use the y and when you use domain you need to use the x and it goes all the way up to uh, positive 6 so my intervals would be negative 5 and 6 on the other side, this last one is a bit like a sine curve. It's kind of locked in here. The domain, of course, is all real numbers. Or in negative infinity to infinity. But the range actually does have some level of structure to it. It doesn't go below negative 2. And it doesn't go above positive 3. So that's my range. Just so you know, you can sort of have it locked in. It doesn't have to be always a line. You can use domain and range for all that. And I really do, for this time, think that's it. So, yep, that's it. Uh, I hope this is helpful to you. Remember, if you ever have any questions, if you just message me, uh, I tend to be able to get back to you with something eventually. So, good luck.